Well, good morning everyone and welcome back to another round of racing here at VSK. Unfortunately, the intro I filmed at the track didn't have the audio quality I needed to actually, uh, well, understand it. I was talking with my helmet on and unfortunately with the helmet on you can't hear anything. You will saw there, I just a big slide. These carts were on brand new tires and the carts are very, very slick on new tires. As soon as we get the rubber down though, the tires will grip up a lot and we'll be able to push very, very hard. So right now, very, very slippery conditions. Just try to get the carts warp. You'll hear I sound a little bit congested. I sure am. It's been a, it's been an interesting holiday for me, but I am doing all right. It's just a little bit with my voice right now. It doesn't sound the greatest. So if the audio quality this race doesn't sound as good, it's because my throat is still recovering from being sick. With that being said, we are just getting the cart warm, and I will skip ahead to my fastest lap of qualifying. It is, of course, your fastest lap that matters. It doesn't matter where you are on track, as long as you get that good lap in. You see, very, very slippery right now. You'll see a stark contrast as soon as we start our laps. And you'll see just getting a good run go as wide as possible before the start of the lap. Stay to that outside line and cut in for that first quarter. Stay all the way to the left here and break just at the break break marker. A little bit later this day, we were getting this line really good and starting to work on T2. Corner 2, of course, is my struggle point on this track, so it's good to see that I'm getting better with it, and I'm getting a lot more confident around the track. Not carrying nearly enough speed through here, though, but I knew I could have done better. I had a whole lot of laps that I could have really, really nailed, that I just wasn't able to get quite right, so it ended up with me a little bit farther back of the grid, but it was still a really good qualifying session for me. I felt quick, and I was quick, with a 5th fastest time in my qualifying session, put me 10th on the grid as we cross the line. And it was right back into the cart for the first round of racing here at uh, the November race. This is the second to last race of the season, so we are approaching the end. We are fighting for points here. Any result that is not uh, better than your last results will get dropped this season. So you'll see a few drivers don't care nearly as much about their results, whereas a driver like me who has a few bad results under his belt will be pushing really hard in these final few races just to try and get the most out of the cart, get the most out of the points we can earn, and try and advance our position in the Saudi World Series. Right now, I'm doing pretty good. I'm P11 in the championship, but I want to push a little bit farther and get into the P10, maybe even a little bit farther if I'm able to push just enough. I will need at least a good result. A top five would do measures here, but I am starting P10. Doing lots of swerving right now, just to try and get the cart warm, just to try and get those tires a little bit more worn. Anything I can do to get the cart into a better condition is worthwhile. And unfortunately for this first race, the camera is pointed a little bit down. I bumped it during, uh, well, while I was either putting my visor down or something. So it's green flag and away we go. We are going to immediately lose a position, so we will have to fight for that again uh, shortly here. As soon as I can catch up and push forward, I can gain back that position. P11 right now. I am working with the red helmet guy on the left. We agreed that uh, if we could work together, we were going to work together. So if I have an opportunity to, I'm going to push him forward and try and gain us both a position. As the driver behind, you can bump a little bit to push the cart in front of you forward and hopefully help them pass the cart in front, and that way you can follow them through. Right now, we did end up with a little bit of a scuffle in the cart behind, but we're all right for now. We're just going to continue pushing forward. You can see he's right on the back of the cart in front, so he feels quick. The cart I was in wasn't the quickest, so we're going to try and push forward as much as we can. I would have gone for a move there if I hadn't been working with him, but I'm just going to back out and stay behind for right now. Just push forward together, work as a team, and see if we can't both gain uh, in our championship fight. He, of course, has a lot to gain. I have a lot to gain, so we're going to try and follow him through as he tries to gain this position around the outside. We're going to go down the inside side by side with him, although we will give him plenty of space. That way he can take back the position. We're going to push him out of this corner, try to encourage him down the inside. The guy in front defends, though, so we're not able to make the move just yet. But he will be a better, uh, it will be a better run down the inside for the straightaway, of course, if the driver in front is able to manage that. A good line for the pair of them sends me just a little bit farther back. The carts all felt weird today. They weren't in fantastic condition, but none was 
none was too much better than the other. And you will see a little bit later on, the carts weren't all equal. We are still just trying to stay with the drivers in front. My cart was a little bit slow, but that's all right. We can continue to push forward and use what we have. Uh, wasn't the slowest driver today. I felt actually very, very quick on the track for these conditions. I like these slippery conditions. They are very conducive to the slippery driving style that I both enjoy in the sim and in the real cart. So worked really well for me. The track was cold, air was cold, and it works well for the engine if the track is, uh, or if the ambient temperature is cold. Engines like cold temperatures, tires like warm temperatures, and right now we are in about the perfect mix of both. The, trier, or the track temperature will increase as the day goes on. The air temperature will not increase very much as the day goes on, so it will be very, very nice conditions for these cars to be running in, and they will be running near their ideal which means we should see some very fast lap times, and we're seeing some fast lap times from the guys in front. We just need to pick up the pace a little bit and catch up to them if we want to continue this fight. We are faster through the corners, which is very, very disappointing because we're only losing on the straightaway where you see them pull such a big gap to, the, uh, to me behind him. But we're closing in every time we take a corner, so we just have to make the most of our cornering ability and the most of our, uh, our pedal work here. You do get a good view of the pedal work and the steering work with the camera so low, so it's not the biggest disadvantage. It's just not fun to watch the race like this. It is informative for a driver like me to be able to see what I'm doing in the cart, because a lot of the times you don't realize what you're doing while you are actively driving. So it's a it's a nice to it's nice to be able to see what I'm actually doing with the pedals, what I'm doing with the steering during a race distance, what what flaws I have that I can improve on. I was looking behind me a lot here. I had just this weird little uh, string behind me that looked like it might have been another car's front bumper. So I was always worried that there was someone just behind me, very, very close. Uh, thankfully, there wasn't actually anyone. We were running away from the carts behind, so we were just sort of getting left in a little bit of Narnia right now. No cart close behind, no cart close in front. So we're trying to change that by pushing forward to the guys in front. They're going to start fighting, so we are going to close in to the drivers in front. Plenty of positions that we do need to gain if we want good points. Uh, starting P10, of course, you do not gain a lot of positions. And uh, right now we want to gain as many positions as possible. They're still very far in front, but they are going to start battling now. So we will start to catch up very, very close, scraping that inside wall using all of the track distance available to us. We're going to go all the way to the outside. It's one thing I've gotten really, really good at is using all the track and not using it artificially. In racing, there is using all the track and there's using it artificially where you don't let the car wash out. You aren't at that limit of the grip. And that's one thing that I was very guilty of is just driving the cart out to the walls without actually driving the cart out to the walls. You want to push the tires all the way to their limit so they're barely holding on. And that's where you get all of the pace out of the cart. That's where we're getting a lot of pace out of the cart right now, is we're steadily closing in on the cars in front, finally finding some pace in this uh, in this cart. It was not the greatest thing to drive on the straights, but in the corners it was doing all right, so we're catching up still. It's going to be hard to make any moves, so we're going to have to hope the guy in front makes some ambitious moves that we're able to follow him through with, or better yet, causes some sort of incident for us to gain a position with. Uh, much as it is a real driving, incidents usually don't occur with any injury, so as long as the driver isn't injured, I say it is no harm, no foul. Uh, of course, there is foul with the penalties, but if the stewards decide to give a penalty, that is entirely up to them, and uh, I would hope they are not afraid to give penalties to any drivers. I know personally, if I got a penalty, I wouldn't be all that upset with it. As long as I knew what I did to get a penalty, I don't really care. But we are closing in on the car in front. You can see them much, much closer now. It's very evident that we're going to be able to follow them if they do manage to make a move. It is the Red Helmet guy, so we are still trying to work with him here. Uh, pseudo teammates in a sense. We are both trying to push forward together. We're very similarly matched. And right now, I think he is slightly quicker uh, with the cart. I am quicker right now overall. But uh, with that cart he has, he is slightly quicker. Just getting out of the corners much more effectively down the straightaways, gaining a lot more time than I am uh, due to the cart's top speed, but he's driving the corners just well enough to stay in front, so the only reason we're catching him now is because he's catching up to traffic. We are going to continue to push forward, though, and try and make some sort of a move. We don't want to stay here. We want to gain at least one or two positions, ideally three, 
but uh, three positions is very difficult to gain in the latter half of the race. He is going to make a move in front of me, so we are going to have to follow him through. And down the inside we go. We're going to go side by side. He's going to have that outside line. We're going to squeeze him all the way, all the way to the outside. Leave barely a car's width. And we are through. Looking over my shoulder a lot more now, thanks to the advice from Adrian. You'll have seen him in the comment of one of my videos. He is one of the drivers who is uh, who's taken the podium quite a few times. And uh, he has given me some advice for driving that I have tried my best to put to practice. Looking behind me a lot more was the main advice he gave me. Just being aware of what carts around me are doing. And it is one thing I feel like I have dramatically improved at guy behind tries to make a move but there's not going to be any space for him and he does just make contact with the back of the car sends it a little bit a little bit upset we are going to have to look over our shoulder and make sure he doesn't make a move using that a uh, little bit of a bump the carts of course do say no bumping but a lot of drivers will still bump anyways and as long as there's no uh, no instant from the bump no position loss no speed loss it doesn't really matter Especially with the uh, bump drafting being a thing, especially here in this track where it's so difficult to make a move, bump drafting sometimes is the best way to make a move, where you push that driver in front of you, make sure they can make the move, and then follow them through. Just a little bit of extra speed with that bump is a huge, huge help to the car in front, and if you play your cards right as the car behind, you can still gain lots of time. They are going to go nearly three wide in front of us, so we will gain a lot of time and potentially a move here. So we're going to go around the outside, side by side with the red helmet driver. Not able to make the move just yet. He was the driver I spent all last month battling with, so it would be good to get by him and not get stuck because I know how well he can defend, and I know how difficult it is to get by him, especially when the cart isn't up to par. So we're going to have to hope that we are able to continue following, and if he makes moves, we should make the moves with him, ideally. We're going to bump out of this corner. Hopefully he can make the move down into turn one, thanks to our bump. That'll slow up the driver in front and let us potentially make a move as well. Quick glance over my shoulder to make sure no one is following us, and a great line through T1 is going to bring us right up next to him. Driver on the inside just flies in with a very, very late move, very, very... Uh, unnecessary move I would say just trying to go for a move where there isn't space and the driver in front of us will get through we're not going to be able to follow thanks to that bump so unfortunate timing for us now we are on the back of the driver and we're going to go down the inside he makes a little bit of a mistake switch back move potentially but we're going to have to stay behind and we're just going to glue ourselves to his bumper it seems like he has about as much speed on these straightaways as we do so we're going to stay right with him he's going to be forced to defend just lazily moves back onto our line though and very very angry with something right now I think uh, I think he's quite upset he's racing his hands but he's not upset with us and we're gonna have to continue to push forward and make a move where you have very limited time left in this race he will go to the inside to defend moves back over a little bit of a contact there but that doesn't matter we're gonna go side by side and make the switch back down the inside side by side for the hairpin this is our move and we have it here diving in on the brakes and we're just going to hold that outside line it's a block pass and we're through. Now we just need to defend that inside line, defend the line onto the straightaway. I believe this might be last lap here. He does make contact with us, tries to spin us out, but we just about keep it. And across the line we go to finish on the checkered flag, a last lap overtake. I do believe that was last lap. It's hard to see without being able to look at the stewards themselves, but it is last lap. So we will finish in an astounding P8 after all of that. A great, great little fight for us does end up with good championship points as well. So we are starting P8 for the last race of the day, going out for our formation lap, get the cart nice and warm and see ourselves to the grid as swiftly as possible. We are a little bit farther back, so uh, taking our time on the formation lap isn't always a bad thing. I don't try to go very quick on the formation lap because the quicker you go, the, uh, the warmer the guy in front's tires are. So if you just slow down a little bit, take it nice and easy, warm your tires, they will have to sit still for longer than you will, and that'll cool down their tires, give you a little bit of an advantage on the start. Because obviously they can't start the race with all the carts, or without all the carts there. And if the guys in front rush ahead, it is not your responsibility to keep up with them. So we're just gonna push forward and uh, eventually have to slow down. We are a little bit out of position, so do have to do a little bit of Tetris to get my cart into the position it's supposed to be. 
And I did get the camera fixed, it's green flag and away we go here for the start of the second race of the day. A little bit of a bump from behind, we're going to go around the outside, squeezed all the way against the wall, but we're able to make the move and go around the outside for this next little bit of a corner. Drifting a little bit wide, but we get a good launch out of the corner, and that's just a babel, just barely able to hold on to that position. And we have gained one on the start, so P7 already, we're going to continue to push forward and see where we can't end up. That is Adrian right in front of me, so I know he's a he's a very tough driver to beat. So we're gonna try our best to try and make it by and uh, well, hopefully gain a few more positions. A very, very far forward finish is on the table for us. So we're gonna continue to push forward and see if we can't end up in a much better position. After just lap one, we gain a position, so that's always a great start. Uh, you love to gain a position on the start. And we're gonna continue to push forward. The cart felt pretty good. It didn't feel fantastic, but it felt pretty good, and it wasn't holding me back. I felt like I was very, very quick today, and a lot of drivers seem to be quick today, so we're going to have a lot of work to do to push forward and try and pass a lot of these quicker drivers. We are right on the back of the driver in front, though, so not much not much for us to do other than try and send it down the inside. We're going to have to back out as he goes for a move as well, see if we can't follow him through or follow the guy through as we go side by side, just barely trying to squeeze our way by, but we're not able to. We're going to have to glance over our shoulder here because we are not exiting the corner very quickly. Guy on the inside thinks about a move, but we're not going to leave him the space. He's not close enough and he wasn't really going for it. So thankfully we are A-OK -okay to continue pushing forward and trying to catch up with the drivers in front. Not running wide enough here, so losing a bunch of speed in the car on the inside. Goes for a move. We're going to hold around the outside and then we're going to just defend this corner. Getting fully ahead and staying ahead. Uh, thankfully able to hold on to that position, but having to defend is slowing us down and we weren't able to follow the cart through in front of us Still having to defend as we go down the inside line and finally back onto our line We're gonna see if we can't make a move on this guy and push ourselves up into P6 uh, P6 would be great for my championship. That would be amazing points that I would be very very happy with As we go around the first corner very very tricky corner and when you get it right It does work very very well for an overtake down into T2 not able to make the move just yet, but we are staying with him, which means we are the quicker driver in this group. And if we are the quicker driver, we should be able to make the move eventually, as we're right on his bumper, barely giving him any space at all. And we're going to go down the inside, just about, not able to hold the speed, so we have to back back out of it and make our move at a latter time, or at a later time it would be. As uh, down onto the straightaway, he does lose again a lot of speed on exit, so we're able to just pull right up to his bumper. And through T1, will we get a run? We sure will. He hits the wall, we hit the wall, but we hit the wall a little bit softer than he does and go down the inside. P6 already, P5 up for grabs just in front of us. P5 would be phenomenal points for us in this season. So we're going to continue to push forward and see where we can end up driving a lot more aggressive now than I ever used to, and it's paid off in dividends. Gonna take a big hit from behind as the driver just goes for a move that they are not going to have the space for, and shouldn't really be going for. Another bump from him. Very, very rough racing from the driver behind. Doesn't want to, uh, doesn't want to follow the no bumping sign, but we're all right. We're gonna have to defend the inside again, move back over to the outside line once I realize they're not going for the move, and carry plenty of speed. That has dropped us way, way farther back from the driver in front. So we're gonna have to push hard to catch back up and hopefully pull away from the driver behind who continually insists on hitting it to my rear bumper. I do try to make the cart as wide as possible. That is the goal. Make your cart as wide as possible. Take up as much space on track as possible. That way the driver behind has a harder time passing you. Uh, it's harder to pass a cart that's taking up all of the road than a cart that's trying to be as small as possible on the road. Run all the way wide, that is the line I prefer there because they can't stick it up the inside and if they don't follow you on that wide line they lose a ton of speed down the straightaway. So it is slightly slower for lap times but it is ideal for just keeping the cart behind from thinking about anything. Because if they do send it there, they hit into your bumper and they get squeezed against the wall and it's entirely their fault for going for a move when they weren't side by side. Going through the twisty section yet again. Another glance over the shoulder. We're going to be glancing over the shoulder a lot this race. Uh, the driver behind was just barely keeping up. We were a little bit quicker, which was good to see. We are pushing forward, and we are steadily catching the guy in front uh, just about. We do need to pick up the pace just a little bit, though, because we are falling back. Getting as close to those walls as possible. Getting very, very good about getting close to those walls. Another look down the inside. 
uh, just make sure the guy does not follow us and does not try to slip it up the inside. The inside line, of course, is the is the ideal place for passing. The smaller the line you have to take, the quicker you can take that compared to your opponent. And getting in front is more important than having a good racing line. So where the, with racing, you go very wide and then you cut narrow and then you go back wide. But for overtaking, it's all about just staying narrow and taking that inside line away from your opponent. Another glance over the shoulder just to make sure he's not close enough to make a move. We were really, really good through T1 and T2 today, which is fantastic because these are the ideal corners to be quick at if you want to overtake. And you can see how much we closed in on the guy in front. He makes a small mistake or something like that as we just close in significantly and even more so as we go through these corners. So he must have been having some sort of an issue with the cart or something like that because we were steadily catching and uh, that steadily catching eventually turns into his bumper as we're right here with him now on the exit of the corner we're almost pushing him and down the straightaway we're gonna have the draft we're not gonna have a line through the T1 though as he does defend the inside we stay to the inside to force him onto that awkward line try to make a move but he just defends that inside line very very nicely no switchback opportunities and the guy behind just goes for a move and it's way too late raise my hand to tell the stewards hey that was too late that was too rough and we are gonna slip back pie uh, he did hit into me with that move, which doesn't feel great getting hit in the breaking zone, but it's alright. We did keep the position. He did, I think he might have returned it. We do have to defend the inside line again. After turn-in, if you send the move after turn-in, it's already too late. The vortex of danger is created at turn-in, and you're just relying on the driver in front moving out of your way. And the driver in front isn't entitled to move out of your way, and if they don't move out of your way, you hit them. And uh, hitting into another driver is never, never a good thing, especially when it comes to real racing instead of virtual racing. We are we are back to the rear bumper of the guy in front, though, uh, battling with Adrian yet again, a driver I've wanted to battle with for a while. So it's glad to I'm good to see uh, that I'm actually keeping up with him, and not only keeping up, but much, much quicker. As we're going to force him to defend that inside line again, we think about the move, but he defends preemptively. And that gets us side by side on exit, but we're not able to do anything with that. We will force him onto the inside line for the straightaway. He's gonna have to defend yet again down into T1, and we're gonna hold that outside line. He will move across, just leave us a cart with. And we are side by side, just trying to make the move around the outside, but he squeezes out wide, and we're not able to make the move. Going down again, the inside line. He's just going to bump into us under braking. And now we're side by side with another driver who we're gonna have to defend from. Down the inside we go. And down the inside he goes again, side by side, hold that outside line, we're able to hold onto the position just barely, and now it's catching back up with the guy in front who bumped us wide. He didn't get a penalty for that, which absolutely should have been. If you bump someone in the braking zone, just barge them out of the way. That's not a fair way to make a move, and not acceptable in any motorsport. So down the main straight again, they're going to start fighting in front of us. We're going to try and push forward and see if we can't catch up. Because they are fighting, they are slowing each other down, and we are steadily catching. Down into T2, we have a great line run very, very wide and carry as much speed as possible. We are closing in, closing in, closing in. We're going to get side by side here. Goes down the inside, moves across on us, hits us. We're going to have to take advantage. Down the inside we go. That's my move to make. And again, he just hits into us with a very, very, very late move. And that one, thankfully, was a penalty, but it should have been more of a penalty for the initial blocking as well. Just a five-second penalty for the driver who hit us which, to me, does not feel like a fair penalty, uh, especially with how many drivers got by. You saw how many people passed, l raising my hands to, the to tell the stewards, hey, that's not okay, why did he do that? And uh, hopefully, uh, the goal is to get that driver warned so that they don't do anything like that again. A uh, guy on the outside holds it there and actually manages to hold on the move. We try for the switchback, but just a little bit of slip uh, causes me to counter steer and lose that speed, so it'll very limited time left to make our moves and try and get by. We're going to go down into the hairpin. We're not going to be able to make the move here. We're going to stay right with him, push him out of this corner, tell him move, push, push, push. Uh, we want to catch up to as many drivers as possible. We did drop back down to P10, so we have to push forward. This was our original qualifying position. We were in P6, though, so four positions lost was not very good. Uh, four positions after the penalties, even. Uh, so we were even farther back. I think it was P11, P12, maybe after the after the punt which is never good you don't want to be punted off like that 
But uh, last lap here, you saw them wave the white flag, so it is up to us to push forward and catch up to the drivers in front, trying to make the move. Will we go for a late send here? No, we're not close enough to make the move. We're gonna have to make it down the straightaway if we're gonna make a move at all. A little bit wide on exit for him, and just correcting a little bit of oversteer causes us to make contact. But uh, we're not going to be able to make the move here, and we're going to have to stay behind and finish in P10 after the penalties. Uh, five second penalty, the driver who did hit me ended up P13, so uh, fair position for him to end up. The only problem is he doesn't actually score any points this result. Uh, that His result got dropped, so he ruins my race and receives no penalty for it. Essentially, it's a slap on the wrist, and it's something he will do again. Uh, as long as there is no consequence to repeated incidents. Which... It's it's not great. I, I don't know why the stewards are so afraid to offend drivers. Uh, the penalties should be handed out regardless of who it is. Especially when there is a victim involved in the incident. Uh, if any of the stewards... And I know some of the stewards watch my videos. It's a, it's a shout out to you guys. I know it's a lot of work. It definitely should push for there to be cameras on the track or something like that. That way people can, uh, can review after the incidents.